All right, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know who I am by now, let me introduce myself one time again. I am the one and only Douglas Habian. That is the name on the YouTube channel. Remember that name. Now, in this series, what we've been doing is been uh, taking a look at some of um, the more popular Linux distributions, the ones that um, I use on a regular basis or from time to time, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, by, by no means an exhaustive list since there are uh, thousands of different Linux distributions, but uh, these are probably some of the more popular ones or the better known ones. So in this episode, we are going to be um, installing a Parrot OS. Um, maybe a better way of saying that would be we're going to be flashing an ISO image of Parrot OS to the USB stick. We're not installing it on a computer. We're, we're going to be doing a, a live USB boot. So I'll try to make sure that I use the correct, correct terminology because that tends to be important when we're dealing with technical things like this. So uh, in my previous episode, if I remember correctly, I showed you the web page documentation and we downloaded the ISO. You already have Belena Etcher. Now I'm on my uh, Ubuntu machine here, and who am I? Well, I don't know. I'll just say I'm John. Uh, host name? Uh, well, let's just say I'm, I'm Dougie Fresh. Anyway, I uh, F config. What is my IP? Oh, wait a minute. I don't have one because I'm not connected to the internet. Why? Well, I treat the internet kind of like the uh, the hood. I get in and get out. If I go there, I go there for what I got to do, and I get out. I don't stay in there uh, too long, so I don't stay on the Internet too long. Internet can be a dangerous place, depending on who you are. So, anyway, back on my Linux machine, my Ubuntu Linux, um, I have the Parrot OS ISO right here in this directory. It is called Parrot Home. It's version 5.3. It's uh, AMD64. If I run a file command on that, get a little more information, uh, we see that it is an ISO 9660 CD-ROM file system with a MBR boot sector. I can run ls-lh to get a um, size of the ISO in human readable format. We see that it is approximately 2.4 gigabytes in size. Not bad. It's about half of what a normal Windows installation is. So, we have the ISO, we have Belena Etcher. Let's go ahead and fire up Belena. Now, I am using the same USB stick that I used in um, previous episodes. So I'm, I'm just very quickly erasing the USB stick. I'm not doing what I would consider a proper erase or a proper wipe. So there's probably still remnants on it from before. I'm not interested in that because this is just for demo purposes. Um, I did already do a quick erase format of it again uh, for this video. So we have Belena Etcher um, up on the screen. We have the GUI for that. Click on flash from file. And then we just have to find our Parrot OS ISO image file, which is already right there for us. I'm going to click open. Um, we're going to click on select target and for the target I'm going to select that USB stick. It is currently plugged into the side of the laptop and let me see here. Uh, even though it is plugged in I'm not seeing it on the screen which tells me that it must not be mounted. So I'm going to unplug it, plug it back in. And we see now it has popped up. So I'm going to click on this box right here, which is for this USB stick. It has 31, a little less than 32 gigs on it, sitting on dev SDB. 
So we'll select that. And the last thing is to simply click Flash. I'm going to have to enter my password in here for um, a little, just a, just a little brief uh, pseudo access. And now we're off and, and running. Uh, no, not running from the law, um, but we're off and running uh, figure of speech. Um, we're flashing the, the image to the USB stick. You see we have a status update um, given back to us on the screen. So it's already flashed uh, roughly 10% of it. It'll flash it, and then it has to go back over it and uh, verify it. Um, so... This shouldn't take too long. Normally, I probably would uh, stop or, or pause the video, but since this is moving um, so fast, I'll just leave the video running. We're only at six minutes. And uh, while we're waiting, I'll tell you here that in um, the upcoming episodes, well, we've already done Dragon OS. And we're doing Parrot OS right now. So in the following episodes, um, maybe the next one I, I'm going to do is going to be Kali. And that's going to be multiple episodes because there's different, a lot of different options for that. They have really good documentation. So um, when I get to the Kali Linux uh, live USB sticks, um, that's when I want to actually start introducing the concept of persistence so we have yet to talk about any of that adding persistence to uh, these uh, live usb sticks so that we can save our progress and have that progress after a reboot or shutting down the, the system um, i also want to talk about uh, encryption lux encryption and then after that something that is actually called uh, a nuke or nuke password and that relates to lux encryption that's going to be a good one after cali then i will probably do tails that's going to be a little more in-depth because we'll be doing that from the command line um, we're going to have to verify the keys and and, and so forth that's a little more um, time intensive and then I'm, i also would like to try a raspbian and when i say raspbian I'm referring to Raspberry Pi Raspbian, but on a USB stick on a PC, which I've, I've actually never done before. So I'm curious to see how that works. That would be that would be a good one. And then perhaps maybe Ubuntu. And in my opinion, that, that pretty much covers the heavy hitters, um, as far as I'm concerned, at least. And... While, while I got you here waiting on this flash, we're, we're almost done. If you see any, any of the videos up yet, you know, it depends on at what time uh, you are watching this video, at what point in your life, I guess I should say. If, uh, if you happen to see other videos up or another series, uh, please, please check those out. Um, I'm working on a couple different series uh, simultaneously. So another one that I'm, I've been working on is... The title is called Under Surveillance. Um, that's going to be a very good one. Been uh, gathering a lot of information for that. And um, I'm doing a couple different series, one on uh, Android and extracting APKs. So make sure you check that out. Uh, there should be a link in my in the channel sub tab on, the, on this YouTube page. If you click on channels, you should be able to see other channels that I've worked on in the past with other videos if that interests you. And uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate the, the support. Um, I'm trying to make this my career. I do have a couple certs. I'd love to do this all day, every day, and get paid paid for it. You know, so um, I appreciate the support. Like, comment, send me some positivity because I have a not, not a whole lot of positivity in my life right now, believe it or not. And I would really, really appreciate that. God bless you. Um, uh, Dios te bendiga. Hey, I don't, I don't really know what else to say. We're almost done here, just waiting on the validation. So, I'll, I'll show you this real quick. This is, I guess, a little, uh, a little bonus. If you don't know what this is, this little guy right here. This, this is 
going to be further talked about in my other series under surveillance. But th this is called a mic jack. Uh, not very expensive. Can't remember the exact price, but you can, you can order them off of Amazon. Um, yeah, you know, maybe twenty dollars or so. I'm I'm not I'm not really sure how much I pay for this. Not a lot. And anyway, this is a mic jack. And what you do with this is just like a pair of headphones. If I I have this other phone right here in front of me. Find the headphone jack. Pop that in right there, just like that. That's it. That's all you do. What does that do? Uh, it disables all the microphones in your phone. I think they say the typical iPhone nowadays has like four or five microphones built into it. So essentially you're walking around with a GPS tracker and a listening device, a camera, etc. at all times. You know, you're walking around with this in your pocket. And even when you're not actively using it, when it's locked, it's in an idle state, these phones still have the power to listen to you to record. And they do. They really do. So by using a